Hello and welcome. Uh, this is the How to Share and Leverage Data in Good Times and in Bad Workshop. And I'm joined by some uh, excellent colleagues from around the country. We've got Marianella from uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Elisa from Boston, and I'm from Northern New Jersey. And uh, this is number 16252. Our learning objectives today are to understand how to assess data quality and consistency issues that directly impact program workflow and implement this kind of assessment in their own programs. Understand the benefits of health information technology and health information exchange for natural disaster preparedness and learn how to leverage multiple funding sources to seamlessly integrate data from disparate data sources. And presenters will provide guidance on pitfalls and lessons learned on how to avoid uh, them, uh, these issues and regions um, interested in replication. Um, this is a continuing education credit uh, workshop. And we're going to go over some introductions. We're going to cover Centro Ararat in Puerto Rico, uh, the Allegheny Health Network in Pennsylvania, East Boston Neighborhood Health Center's uh, case study, wrap up and some lessons learned, and then finish with some Q&A. So welcome, everyone. Um, on my side of the house, we're at RDE Systems in northern New Jersey. And we're going to be pulling from principles and lessons learned from across the country, many disparate programs, but all in the HIV field, um, everything from care and treatment to prevention to housing, looking at multiple perspectives of users. That's an important element uh, with um, working on uh, IT projects. Um, everybody has their own unique uh, perspective, very important to engage all the various stakeholders. And these three case studies are on a provider-centric approach. Um, and that is, in order to provide patient-centered care, I am advocating to look at things from a provider perspective, um, which as, you know, recipients are, um, aren't always able to put the time and effort into looking at a provider perspective. Providers often receive funding from multiple different funding sources. Sometimes the data systems are in data silos. Um, so you'll see that um, today, you'll get a sense of being able to pull that together across these disparate uh, sources. On our side at RDE Systems, we have about 30 years of public health experience. We fell in love with the Ryan White program 15 years ago, and we've dedicated uh, almost exclusively everything that we do for health information technology to the HIV field. Over 700 agencies have used our software, over 20,000 providers, CBO, and DOH users. Over 13,000 consumer and patient users directly have used the technology with low literacy tools, um, about over 250,000 patients. A key theme without, uh, throughout all of this is security and privacy being number one. So um, some of the programs that you're going to see here, um, all of them are covered with a FedRAMP uh, certified um, platform. It's a hosting platform. On top of that, we also use zero-knowledge encryption called E2LKM, which means that even as the vendor, we don't have access to sensitive identifiers. It's a pretty unique way um, to secure patient data, which is essential um, in these days. We're dismayed of the breaches that we see across the country, and we want zero breaches. About a billion dollars has also flowed through the system, so it has to track all of the finances. And this is a big theme today. This is the provider data uh, points exchange. About 300 million have flowed through the system, connecting EMRs and other data silos for electronic transmission. Um, that's a lot of keystrokes saved. That translates to about 800,000 hours saved and over 400 FTEs. And that's much more meaningful uh, work and human resources spent on quality improvement and clients and patients instead of paperwork. Also, we help with grant writing assistance, about $15 million. Uh, we've helped uh, secure, and that's another theme, is that there are grant funding sources out there to help with capacity assessment and capacity development. Also, innovation is a theme, and we've worked on about 19 SPINS projects, and we've taken those SPINS replication studies very seriously and have been able to leverage them in these projects as well. We're very transparent about what we do. There's been over 75 publications we advocate for human-centered participatory design. So this is really, um, it's, it's an investment of time with all the various stakeholders, but it, it pays dividends. It's definitely worth it. These are some other workshops that we're presenting across the country at the National Ryan White Conference. So there's a number of others you can probably search for to find if this is up your alley. 
there's some cross-cutting themes across all these uh, three sites. And one of them is this is the ending the HIV epidemic strategy and the various pillars. And I'd like to advocate for at least meta metaphorically a fifth pillar of reducing administrative burden. It's uh, time is our finite resource, it's non-renewable. So any way that we can be resourceful about reducing that administrative burden, uh, reducing the staff stress, burnout and turnover in the field and transforming certain reporting burdens into tools for empowerment. And that means um, getting the right data and the right tools, high quality data, complete, accurate, timely data that's actionable. That's in a visual form that's usable, that's meaningful, and um, that, that staff can use to look at programming, priority setting, uh, resource allocation, and uh, quality improvement. The tools themselves should be useful and usable. So user friendliness is a big theme. We don't want these tools to be barriers. Another, uh, this is one of my childhood heroes, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. That's been the theme that we've uh, used to implement these projects. So you can go from around the, re around the regions in the country and see what works, uh, use that, and then add what's unique. So you're gonna see a bit of that today. Now we're actually gonna switch to an interactive poll. We're trying to make this virtual uh, workshop even a little bit more interactive. So uh, if you get out your iPhone, we can go, you can go to a page right here with your, with your phone and kind of QR code it. If you have an iPhone, you can just point the camera at it. If you don't have an iPhone, you can have a QR reader, um, or you can just go to e2polls.com slash centro. Um, if you go to e2polls, you can just put the code in as well, centro. And this will let you, I'm gonna walk through a couple of um, uh, questions here that you're gonna uh, be able to see. Give me one second. Okay, um, I'm gonna just read these out, so I'm not sure how to share quickly, but uh, the first question on your device would be, what is your current role? And there's various questions here. Many of you wear multiple hats, so feel free to select all. The second question is, what funding sources must your agency report to? The third question is, what challenges and headaches do you have about data systems relating to um, data exchange and usefulness of data in your programs? And you can put as many as you like in there. Um, if you'd like access to handouts and some additional materials that we have, you can put your email address. And then the last question you can leave open. This is a whiteboard question, which will let you um, ask questions or comments. You know, as presenters, it's really tough to get a sense of uh, folks. So if you like something or want to have a comment, feel free to leave it in the whiteboard. And uh, although this is pre-recorded, we're going to be able to see this in the Q&A session uh, when we get to that. And while you're filling that out, I really want to take the time to thank all the teams that were involved with Centro Ararat and Project Shine and Allegheny Health Network, the RDE team who's, who's worked their hearts and souls out on this. We want to thank HRSA for their funding and support. And um, these projects are, are really excellent. The lessons learned are worth it. So you can, you can continue those, um, those questions, this little interactive poll um, at your own pace. And I'm going to keep going now. All right, so actually, I'm going to turn this over to Marianella um, at Centro Ararat. Wonderful folks there. And that's what, that's what my background is. I don't know if you can see my background, but it's the login screen for E2 Centro. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Hi, everyone. My name is Marianella. I am the Data Quality Administrator of Centro Ararat. And I would like to start talking a little about what is Centro Ararat. Centro Ararat is a nonprofit private institution with a mission to provide access to comprehensive community based primary care, mental health care, preventive care, and social services for diverse populations in underserved communities throughout Puerto Rico. Founded in Ponce, Puerto Rico in 2001, Centro Ararat currently serves more than 2,500 patients island-wide, of which more than 800 are people living with HIV. 
we are funded by Ryan White Part A, B, and C. Part C funded since 2014. Centro Ararat has four primary care clinics, two special care clinics, and two pharmacies, both of them are 340B. Here you can see a political map about Puerto Rico. Uh, the, the things highlighted in light blue are the cities where Centro Arara have their clinics. Centro Arara has some challenges like legacy system going out business on March 2016 no data available after legacy system was shut down, data migration for legacy system to a new system to prevent loss of data around the RSR, constrained resource, time and money, tracking client eligibility, and no system for measuring data quality and productivity. So how did Centro Arara solve these problems? Uh, emergency rescue mission. Centro Ararat and RDE start the system collaboration. The RDE team start to show us how was the system and how this system can help us. So here is the beginning of E2 Centro. This is how Centro Ararat decided to call a compass system. This was an instance data cleanup by Centro Ararat team. A stakeholder were involved in testing and review of prototypes and successful training conducts across the, across the network. Here you can see a central timeline with all the projects that we already achieved. The projects start on March 2016 we had a prototype launch in, November, in May 2016, and then we can obtain the launch on November 2016. Then something happened in Puerto Rico. We are going to talk a little more about it. And we are moving forward with the system and improve more projects inside E2 Centro. Outcomes. E2 Centro project kicked off on March 2016. As timeline presented, the system developed and launched in eight months. So in November 2016, Centro Arara already had E2 Centro system with all the patients and all the data in there. What we success? Training for 50 users across three sites in Puerto Rico. Approximately 4,500 clients record migrated from our legacy system to Ito Centro. 2.8 million data, data points migrated from legacy system to Ito Centro and successfully migrated. And of course, RSR ready system that is a uh, so that, it, that is a challenge to all of us that receive Ryan White Fund. So we can do this report on time and submit it with any, any problem. Here you can see a visual RSL bit in. This is how the RSR work in E2 Centro system. It's very friendly. Here you can obtain uh, the report before you import it in the EHB. So here in Ito Centro, you can choose the period, have the ability to choose which report format do you want to run. Hey, the, the report presents the errors, warnings, alerts, and category, and it is configured at the same of the EHB. So you can obtain all the error warnings and alerts with this system before you export it and you can face them before you submit it in the ESB. Also, the RSR module had a completeness report 
with graphics and with all the percent that your clinic are, are compliance. So you can identify if there is any missing value and the system provides you the list to you that you can identify if this missing is, is for example, any data missing or something that you can fix before exported. At the end, we have 2003 and users, hours saved, <laughs> no double data entry, and we got happy employers, so that are happy end of, of the users of Ito Center. But then something happened in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was disbanded by a hurricane named Maria on September 2017. So Centro Arara have access problems with the network. Our EMR was down and all the servers was down. We had no telephone connection, intermittent internet, and no access to client records. Centro Arara request to Ito Centro, uh, request or call them for a system to request a report, a file with our, with information about our, all the patients that we already have in the system. And ECOMPAS system can do this work within two hours. So in two hours, we can obtain a list with the name, physical address, clinic, patient type, and all the information that we need to reach out and to outreach this, the patients. And we can deliver the medication and to identify if there are any patient in, in a mission of with this hurricane. Recipient staff could easily download the file from E2 Centro very easily. The file enables Centro Ararat to locate patients, facilitating outreach and successful medication delivery. The report is helping Centro Ararat on an ongoing basis. And this is this award of the clinical data administrator, myself. And say thanks to you and your team for the help. The report is very, very helpful to us in this moment. And yes, was like that. So Centro Arara was very grateful to can obtain this report from E2 Centro RDE team. So we keep growing up as a clinic and we keep improve the system, E2 Centro. And at this moment, we have these three modules and reports that are very important for clinic and for all people living with HIV. They are automated eligibility module, service and productivity report, and data quality report. With the automated eligibility report, we can track documents. The, the module have the ability to upload documents to the system, and those documents are fed or are required to the patient eligibility. At this moment, we have 4,425 documents securely uploaded in ITU Centro. The eligibility module also identifies of what funds the patient is eligible. So when a user is registered the data in the different fields, for example, demographic, zip code, HIV status, and income, the system will provide the information if the client is eligible or not, and what fund it could be eligible this client. Also, this module has an eligibility history chart, and that helps us a lot to identify or to know what is how is the eligibility tracking in of the client in the system or in the clinic because we can see the past six months the past three months and the 
and the eligibility of the patient of what happened with this patient three months after this. He was eligible for for some funding, but now he's not, or now he's eligible just for one of them. The second is the service and productivity report. This report helps a lot about the time and effort of our employer and to identify the different services provided in Centro Ararat. You can search the service and producti productivity report by provider or by services. Then we have the data quality report. This data quality report helps us to identify any missing data or missing value that we have in our system and also identify duplicate services that can be registered by error and if a patient is missing some screening or something that is important to, to him. With the data quality report, you can obtain uh, you can obtain a drill down with with the clients. If so, if this patient has something missing, the report will identify all the missing that the patient had, and we provide this list. So we keep with Ito Centro. We are very satisfied with the system, and these are part of our, our Centro Ararat's future vision. Visual analytic report, have performance measure report, clinical quality management, outcomes module and try and Y compliance report, prevention module, uh, an automated EMR integration pilot to save to save staff time and to improve data consistency. In our future vision, we have the visual analytics report. With this module, we can obtain any report that you need about all the data and all the services that you are registered in the ECOMPA system. It's very friendly to use and also is presented in graphics. This graphic helps us to show us uh, to any, meet, any internal meeting or to visualize how is our, our data and our po population in the in the system. Also, we can obtain numbers about our clinic, demographics, and all of them, all of this. The half performance measure. This is one of my favorites. We are working in this future mission, and we are ready to start to work on it. This report identify how is your clinic based on the half performance measure. So you can see if if your clinic needs to do something else to effort something effort additional efforts to compliance with the clinical guide of those patients. The CQN outcomes module provides us information about the expectation of the grants obtained. Ryan Y report. This Ryan Y compliance report should provide your measurable objective in number as a list in your grant application. This helps us to achieve if you can identify is there some category that you are not reaching and work in an effort to, to achieve. So monthly you can obtain how is the numbers and how is how you are working to reach out this goal that you that you provide or that you report in your grant. Also, we have the prevention report. And the prevention report is divided into areas, one for HIV testing and one for, for STI. So in HIV testing, we can see how many tests, HIV rapid tests our different clinics are doing, how many clients are preliminary positive, negative, in term, in, indeterminate, and we can obtain a total. This report also provides a list with those patients. 
Also, we can measure our STI testing, syphilis, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and we can obtain a report by clinic, by age, by results, and by test what they do with us. And here we have some users' feedback that users that are at this moment in Centro Ararat. So for example, the system is great. RSR is very easy and as smooth compared to Aviga. Aviga was our fast EHR. I like it too. It is easy to enter information. Thank you. Your efforts and dedication are not taken from for granted. Thank you, Anusha and team, for delivering the data quality report ahead of a schedule. And the labs and immunization tasks are also very helpful. You also here can see a satisfaction scores around about our user, how, how they are, how satisfied they are using the system. And they are very, very satisfied because the system is very easy to use and have a lot of modules that help us to compliance with many funded and with the, all the care that the patient have to have to have. And thank you everyone and this is part of the Centro Ararat team with Jesse Thomas. <laughs> thank you Marianella, that was awesome um, and it's great to see the good work is continuing. I'm very excited to, for you and the team. All right, I think we're gonna move on to the second case study, the Allegheny Health Network. The Allegheny Health Network Positive Health Clinic, or PHC, is a Ryan White uh, program, Part C, providing HIV primary care since 1996 and Part C funded since 2002. It's located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in Allegheny County, the second highest incidence in prevalence county for HIV AIDS in Pennsylvania. It's structured within the Allegheny Health Network, AHN system, comprised of eight hospitals and more than 200 primary and specialty care practices. It's a multidisciplinary treatment and support team of providers, nurses, medication rooms, social workers, peer advocates, quality management, and data analysis, uh, analyst team, and office coordinators. Back in um, mid-2016, the challenge was uh, closure of a legacy data system. Uh, an EMR tool, and um, AHN needed an RSR-ready system capable of storing data relevant to the Ryan White HIV AIDS program, the QM program, and to be able to support EMR integration and beyond. There was no capability to, re to produce the HAB reports from the legacy system, so there was lots of manual data entry. It was a poor utilization of human resources, and um, the lack of resources within AHN's IT department made it, made it challenging. So how did we solve this problem together? It was a rescue mission, and it was um, the quality management coordinator uh, facilitating engagement and successful collaboration with RDE systems. There was some legacy data cleanup by uh, the quality management coordinator, some creative thinking and brainstorming. It was a successful partnership in the beginning of E2 Allegheny. And there was success. Nearly 1,500 client records were migrated from the legacy system to E2 Allegheny. Uh, there was 1.6 uh, million data points migrated from the legacy system. The RSR Ready system, an on-time RSR report submission was successful. Um, generating the RSR submitted uh, without errors uh, in 2017. There was a, a, an extensive um, iterative process uh, and timeline from starting to specs to prototypes to user acceptance testing to launch sign off to launch to the prototype to the launch then phase two began and then phase two draft specs began and then phase two was launched in September of 2017. But if you look at overall the whole system was developed and launched in eight months with the data migration. That was a really compressed time schedule but it worked really well and um, there were ongoing challenges with services, lab results, and immunizations just with the sheer volume of them. And so the way to overcome that was the E2 data import system was utilized to import that data electronically on a weekly basis, saving a lot of time. 
Um, with EMR, there was a challenge of the lack of, uh, the lack of available resources within the IT department. And so being able to work within the boundaries of, of the HIV program staff resources was the, was the secret to that. And we, we see that oftentimes. Um, HL7 is an interoperability data standard with EMRs, and the IT team didn't have the time to implement that. Um, but the import module that was used for migration was able to uh, be used on an ongoing basis. And so um, the administrative features were introduced to assist the AHN staff to easily address any data inconsistencies between the EMR and the E2 Allegheny system right away. Um, the older way of doing things prior to E2 Allegheny took about six to seven hours to generate the HAB performance report, and the results were distributed by the data analyst. The new way is a one-click HAB performance report that you just click on in E2, and uh, this is what Sam said, the data analysis and reporting coordinator. She said, I almost cried the first time I did it. It was so easy and wonderful. So there was lots of uh, positive outcomes of time and effort savings, Getting data out of E2 is easy. The improved staff, uh, improved data quality and consistency using the data exchange and staff time was better utilized on client care instead of paperwork and double and triple data entry. Agent's future vision um, is to use data and visual analytics of all of the client data within the system to assess trends and assist in planning. There's a, a nice case study that um, we're gonna make available um, if you've left your email address or I can probably just search for it. And this is uh, the AHN team. So that's it for Allegheny, and I will now turn this over to Alisa. Oh, Alisa, I think you're on mute still. Thank you, Jesse. Sure. Um, and I think you're going to assist with the slides, moving them forward, correct? Yes. Thank you. So my name is Elisa Sosa. I am the program director at Project Shine, which is a department at the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. Um, if you can go on to the next uh, slide. And if you, if you had asked me three years ago if I'd be presenting on data, I, my answer would have been a very firm and clear and oh no. And yet, I've learned that life is very, we have all learned life is unpredictable, and here I am reporting, uh, presenting, and very proudly presenting on um, our journey with data collection, data reporting, utilization of the data, and our successes and our challenges. And just to give you a, a bit of a background about the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center, I just want to let you know that um, we are one of the largest healthcare providers within our region. We are actually celebrating. 50 years um, of providing community health care to our community. And we have been able to do this because we strongly believe in our mission. And we are guided by this mission to provide easily accessible, high quality, safe health care to all who live and work in East Boston and the surrounding communities without regard to age, income, insurance status, language, culture, or social circumstances, regardless of ability to pay. And because of this mission, um, again, we have been able to serve a very diverse community, primarily low income and a community that's best served in a language other than English. And in any given time year, or actually within an 18 month period, we have been able to serve 85,000 patients, over 300,000 visits, and we employ more than 1,100 employees. And as of July 1st, we actually merged with South End Community Health Center, and so we've increased our capacity to better serve our community and um, address the needs of our, of our people. And just to give you um, a brief overview of Project SHINE, so SHINE stands for Support, Healthcare, Intervention, and Education. And we have been serving individuals living with HIV, affected and at risk for HIV AIDS for over 25 years now. Um, and we are able to do this by providing a comprehensive integrated delivery system of care that's accessible, patient-centered, culturally competent, and most importantly, compassionate. And we do this by providing a one-stop shop 
and team model of care that allows for efficient and effective coordination of care. And again, because of this delivery care system and our model of care, we have an average of 10.2 days of linkage to care. That's from time someone is diagnosed to when they see a prescribing provider. We've also been able to achieve a 98% viral load suppression. And we, like many of your programs, have multiple funding streams with different reporting requirements. And we know what that's like. And we're feeling, obviously, the pressure of limiting demission resources. Next, please. And so while I'm presenting, I'm definitely here representing this wonderful, shiny team. And this is a very cohesive team. We work very hard to accomplish our goals and to meet the needs of our patients and, and um, to help them obtain optimal health outcomes. But as you can see, it's a relatively small team. And while this is a wonderful team, not all is sunshine in East Boston. And so um, we do have some challenges. As many of you probably have experienced, we've also had fragmented um, challenges with fragmented data systems. So we started out with homegrown um, Excel spreadsheets, data um, access data systems, um, a data entry in E2, in E2 Boston and EMR. And so obviously there was um, double data entry and a high burden for our, for our staff. And um, you know, making sure that we were tracking where data was entering was, was definitely challenging and that the data was consistent. So we definitely experienced some data inconsistencies and data quality issues. And I think something that I'm not alone in is, is, is the challenge with the inability to generate patient level data report, the RSR, one XML file to meet that um, annual compliance. So this is what our challenge looked like. We would spend weeks at a time hours going through Excel spreadsheets, um, printed forms, and looking at EF doing chart reviews, and looking at the various data collection systems, and it just felt overwhelming. And it was, it was simply RSR time was a nightmare. But that nightmare did not stop us from having a vision. And so we had a vision, and that vision was to um, develop a single comprehensive Part A and Part C system that could reduce the burden for staff and allow them to have more time with patients and to do the other meaningful work that they do. Um, we wanted to have the capability of automatically sharing data between Part A, MBPHC, and with other funded systems. Um, we wanted a system that was seamless and comprehensive, so a data collection system that would allow us to interface with our EMR record, we use EPIC, and um, where we could reduce that double data entry and obviously improve the data consistency and the data quality to better utilize it for program development and um, improve quality improvement. We also wanted the, the capability to run meaningful reports for both Part A and Part C and with the goal of, of just better serving our patients. And the ultimate vision obviously was to do away with the RSR nightmare and produce a single RSR XML file. And so we found a solution. We did not give up and uh, we applied for, so our EBNHC IT department and RDE systems worked together, collaborated, and we applied for Part C capacity building grant in 2015 with the intention of maximizing the existing platform, which was E2 Boston, and that was developed by EBPHC Part A. Uh, we embarked on a collaboration and partnership with RD Systems and Boston Public Health Commission, obviously our IT department. And once we received notification that we were awarded the grant, we created our E2Shine project team. And one of the things that we did was we included program staff. That was very important was to include program staff in addition to our IT department is to have program staff as part of our team. And E2Shine was developed. So what is E2Shine? Um, E2Shine is powered by, E2, by eCompass and E2Boston. And what makes it unique is that it's a system within a system. So E2Shine is a system within E2Boston. 
and it allows us to have a comprehensive Part A and Part C HIV data system that is able to sec uh, securely share data and automatically share data between both parts. Um, E2 Boston intelligently redirects the user to E2 Shine based on roles and permissions of the user accounts. And so we're able to um, pretty much set what access staff have um, to E2, E2 Shine. And so we have some administrators and then we have just, you know, individuals who enter data and individuals who can manipulate the reports. Um, and and that's, that's a great feature to have. And most importantly is our ability to have E2 Shine work alongside with our electronic medical record system. And so how does E2 Shine interface with E2 Boston? So our EMR, Electronic Medical Record Epic, imports, so we actually manually import data into E2 Shine and uh, E2 Shine then shares Part A specific data with E2 Boston. And it's a very seamless process. And so if you're wondering how do we distinguish Part A and Part C clients, and that was very important for me to, um, to know when we were in this process. Uh, basically, if you see here, you see that um, if it's visible to Boston Public Health Commission, then if it's a yes, then client has Part A services under services screen. And this means that this is the data um, that Boston Public Health Commission Part A would be able to, to have access to. And so I always say that out of challenges, there's opportunities and there's um, good that can come out of any challenge. And so out of this you know, process, challenging process with our data reporting um, and utilization, we have the story of Walter, IT and RD. And I'd like to introduce our E2 Shine superhero. And so again, out of this challenge, we were able to sort of birth a superhero and Walter is a medical case manager. So he has the programmatic background. He understands the workflows. He understands the challenges and the burdens. And he really, you know, he worked very well with IT and RD and just has become our E2 Shine superhero and is the liaison that helps with making sure that things are working smoothly, identifying any glitches and any areas of improvement. And so again, out of any challenge, we can um, you know, bring opportunities and, and have positive results. And obviously along with that success, we were able to launch our, and with the help of our superhero, we were able to launch uh, E2 Shine in November of 2017 with migrating 256 Part C clients in E2 Shine and 200, almost 300,000 data points were imported into E2Shine, uh, 544 data points securely and autom automatically shared with Part A and Boston Public Health Commission. And obviously, uh, as Jesse mentioned at the beginning, saving time, um, such a valuable resource. And so this is something that's absolutely invaluable is, is the time that we're able to save staff. And just in terms of the feedback, I think the most important thing is really um, how user-friendly the system is and the collaboration, the uh, ability to work with our DE, with our IT system, and just feeling that we have the support from, from this um, newly created team um, to make it through the process. And so staff is absolutely happy with that. And we don't stop there. Um, we continue to envision what else we need. And one of the things we are working towards is um, obtaining the vision of having an automated EMR integration pilot to save time and to improve data consistency. So currently we manually import the data. We'd like for this to happen automatically. And so we are definitely working towards that. Um, we'd also like to be able to utilize um, obviously enhance our performance measures reporting for both Part A and Part C and have a holistic view of how we're performing, how our patients are doing and identifying areas of improvement, as well as um, expand on other funding streams. So I'd like to have a centralized unified data system. And like any process or journey, there's always lessons learned. And so um, one of the lessons learned that we'd like to share is 
stakeholder involvement from inception is very important, making sure we understand who is who needs to be part of that process and the team so that we have various perspectives is key. Um, we were under, we had a rescue mission um, as well, not as um, intense as our other colleague with the hurricane. However, it's great to work with partners that understand our needs and our challenges and are willing to do whatever it takes to help us through any um, challenge that we may experience. And just the, the teamwork and the good partnership, really, that that bridge the knowledge gap between program and technology, making the data system easier to use. That is priceless. And just the ability to pick your partners wisely. And so if you're going through any of these challenges, keep the hope, keep searching for that solution. It definitely is out there. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Elisa. And just to kind of wrap up some final, uh, final thoughts across all three sites, um, I really do think that partnership and collaboration is such an important aspect in this field. Um, you're dealing with complicated regulations that change, data requirements, disparate data systems, and so being able to work closely to, with one another and also be able to overcome unforeseen challenges, that's a really important element of this. And across all three, you can see that there was um, varying levels of IT support. And having program staff help with that is a, is, a, is a really great strategy. IT departments are often stressed and burdened with lots of other requirements. And especially in larger systems, it's tough to find folks who understand the HIV program and all those data requirements. So um, partnering and, and making things as easy as possible for IT to do things in phases, trying to break things up into manageable pieces uh, for everybody. And because the data is high security, it's um, very important that that security and privacy be taken seriously, can't cut corners um, on that. And then again, with the, with the end in mind, that the idea is uh, by freeing up staff time and resources, you're able to then do uh, more, not just with patients and quality improvement, but also additional capacity development so that you can keep um, sort of reinvesting um, the save time into better, uh, better and more effective ways to enhance capacity and keep the system evolving because uh, things change over time, of course. And also this other aspect of the architecture of the system being um, web-based is a very um, important and powerful way as we saw with disaster preparedness in Puerto Rico. Um, and then at the end of the day, thinking about this, these are real implications to consumers and clients. This is what this is all about. So um, that patient-centered focus and being able to provide better service and especially uninterrupted service during the hurricane in Puerto Rico, for instance, these are all very um, powerful and inspiring um, stories. So I want to thank everybody involved. It's been a wonderful collaboration. Uh, we're enjoying all of the personal relationships we've developed, and we are so happy to help continue uh, supporting this. So with some wrap up, how do we accomplish these ambitious goals? One bite at a time. So thank you, everybody. And also, everybody has been super collaborative. If other regions need assistance, all these partners have been really wonderful and in, in offering their time up to, to help others around the country. Um, so this is our contact information. And thank you, everybody. <laughs>